Hello everyone and welcome back. So, this time we're we'll going on stresses on inclined planes. Funny, like, okay, well, how hard could it be? It's, it's actually not that bad, don't worry about it. Um, but remember last time we had two situations. Either the stress was acting on a plane that was perpendicular, or the stress was acting on a plane that was parallel. Never anything in between. And the choice of this is completely arbitrary. Because when things break, as you can see right here, they don't always break at right angles or parallel. So my question for you is, why do you think the pipe failed at this angle right here? It's kind of a 45 degree angle. Um, and why do you think that is the case? Is there a way we could figure that out? Well, the answer to that question is yes. Yes, we can figure out what causes pipe to fail at such a strange angle. Now, to do this, we're going to have to redraw what we had before. So earlier we had this, and we're moving over to this. So we're going to be looking at a plane that is not parallel, but is instead oriented at an angle, and the angle is going to be arbitrary. Okay? So we're going to choose some angle theta. That's like theta right there. That's going to be between the normal vectors of our unchanged plane. So you know when it's just perfectly perpendicular, going straight to the right and now our new plane. So this was the direction originally, and now this is the direction now. Now we're gonna be able to determine the normal and shear stress on the plane by breaking the applied load into components. You can see that the load, that doesn't change. When we, doesn't matter what our plane is, the load's gonna stay the same. However, the components are going to be very different. Before, there was only a normal component because that component went straight along the load line. Now we have it angled, so we'll have a shear force and a normal force component on this plane. So we're going to get both. It's now being mixed. One last little thing to note, which we're going to go over soon, is that the area is no longer the same either. Our cross section has changed because our area of our surface changes as we angle it. Okay, so the first step in investigating this step is to break our applied load into components, which isn't that terribly difficult to do. You've done it so many times before, you have some sort of angled vector, you find the parallel component, and the normal component, and you can use theta to figure that out. And depending on which angle you use, um, you'll get either use cosine theta or sine of theta. So just look at how you've drawn it, and you'll go from there. Okay. Now, what I said earlier was that the angled plane has a different area than our original plane. You need to remember that. You also need to remember that the angled plane increases in area as our angle gets bigger. It makes sense. As we get further and further along here, that line gets longer and longer while the thickness stays the same. And so obviously the area is getting bigger. So if you were just trying to guess this or figure out an equation for it, well, you would realize soon that it had to be cosine theta. Because sine of theta is actually going to get smaller as our angle increases. Sorry, <laughs> sine of theta would make this smaller as our angle increases because sine of theta begins to go to a maximum while cosine of theta goes to a minimum at 90 degrees. Yeah, and so you would see A over sine of theta would have been infinite if A is zero instead of equaling A. And we can check ourselves. So let's see this right here. Okay, so equals A over cosine of zero. If we haven't moved it at all, it shouldn't change, and cosine of zero is one, so equals a. Everything checks out, it's all hunky-dory. Okay, now we can calculate the normal and shear stress components for any arbitrary angle by plugging the values we calculated. So our normal stress is right here. We take our normal component of the force over the area of our new surface, which we can calculate fairly easily, p cosine and theta, because our load was like this, we had our plane, and then we had our normal component and our shear component. And then our angle was right here, theta. So P cosine theta over A over cosine theta. This is our, what we got from our earlier equation. We simplify somewhat and we'll come out to this equation right here using some fun trig identities. We can do the exact same thing for our shear stress component. As always with stress, it is force over area. Force over area, stress has the same units as pressure. Don't forget that. Stress has same units as pressure. 
So if for some reason you get something that doesn't have stress or doesn't have pressure units, you probably made a mistake in your equations. And then we have our second equation right here, which tells us how we get the shear component of the stress on this surface. And this is just another visual way of looking at it. We have our normal stress caused by this normal component of the load. We have our shear stress, which is caused by this shear component of the load. Okay, so we're gonna stop here for now. And next time we're actually gonna look at how this varies as we change our angle from zero to 180 degrees. So I hope this helps you. And I will see all of you next time. Have a wonderful day.